Welcome back you guys and there have been a lot of interesting trends this NBA season from surprise teams to disappointing players but also there have been players who are getting back to what they used to be or are more productive than their 2016 and 2017 seasons. Whether that was due to injuries, lack of playing time, or their games simply weren't as productive, these guys are making a comeback. Obviously things can and will change because that's how these things work, but let's at least document who's having a revival year so far through the first 18 games of the regular season. First on the list we gotta speak on Derrick Rose who's probably been the Timberwolves' second best player this year. Last year with the Cleveland Cavaliers, he was dealing with a bone spur in his left ankle which kept him out for some time. The injury was another hit to his lower body which has taken a lot of punishment this decade. I definitely heard and read from a lot of people that thought Derek could be out of the league soon after his little stint in Cleveland. How much more could his body take and is he even worth for a team to pick up if he can't stay healthy as a low end starter or an off the bench scorer? But now in his second season with the Minnesota Timberwolves, he's setting himself up to get at least a 2-3 year contract this summer as Minnesota's second best player. He's averaging a career high in 3 point percentage and true shooting percentage. That's the most impressive thing about Derek for me this year, he's been really efficient. There was an interview that Derek did, I'm not sure when, but it was at least a month ago. He was basically saying that he had to relearn how to do catch and shoot threes because he didn't have the same rhythm from having to rehab all the time. And that's how he's been able to hit shots so well from three so far because he's finally got a rhythm down. Of course he's getting to the rim and hitting his mid-range shots that he's known for, but the three point accuracy is what is going to make him a tough cover on defense. It's cool to see someone that's missed so many games in the past three years adjust well to the NBA's current climate of three point shooting, especially when it's someone so easy to root for like Derrick Rose. Now having Danilo Gallinari on here might be the most contested player in this video, but I thought why not have him in because he's having a great start to the year with the Clippers. I think because of his injuries his scoring skills get forgotten about so I had to put him in here. He missed almost the entire 2018 Clippers season and in his last two years with Denver he missed almost half the year in each season so he's been out of the NBA conversation. But now on a Clippers team that is currently number one in the West. He's back to doing what makes him such a tough player to stop, and that is scoring at all three levels, at the rim, in the mid-range, and at the three-point line. His scoring ability at 6'10 is pretty tough to stop. He can shoot over anybody, and if he has a smaller player on them, he can get by them. Again, let me say that Gallo has always been good at scoring. The problem is, he's dealt with so many injuries that he hasn't been able to do it consistently over multiple months, but so far he's been hooping. A guy that is 6'10 and can put the ball on the floor, give you 18 points per game, and shoot 45% from three, that's a really good offensive player. Let's hope he stays healthy because he makes the Clippers a very tough team to defend and score on. Another Western Conference player that is reviving his career is Amon Shumpert and he's doing it with the Sacramento Kings. Shump was traded to the Kings 10 months ago but he didn't play at all. They let him rest his body instead of throwing him out there for meaningless regular season games. I made a video about Shumpert's fall off a while ago and some of it was due to his injuries. When he was with Cleveland he was banged up a bit and had to get surgery and sit out for a while. In Sacramento he's looked healthy and has that side to side and first jump explosion that we saw with the Knicks and Cavs. He's had a few 20 point games and has been a good mentor to this young Kings team. I think the most important part about Shumpert on the Kings is that you can tell he's playing with a lot of pride. Remember when George Hill signed to the Kings and was brought in as a mentor, then like 4 months later he wanted out because he was expecting to win? Well Shumpert has been what Hill was supposed to be with the Kings, he's a good locker room guy and his play has translated to some wins. When someone moves from a championship team to a team like the Kings, their motivation for the game might fall off for a little, you don't have the same energy when you step onto the floor, but Shump is playing like he's building something special in Sacramento and he has that same hunger he had during those first two years with the Cavs. He's not the best player on the team or anything and he's not averaging like crazy stats, but he's giving them good minutes defending and making threes. Next up on the list we have Blake Griffin who's playing like he's gonna go back to the All-Star game in a few months. Blake actually got to spend this offseason working on his basketball skills rather than rehabbing his body. He did have an ankle bruise that put him out for the final 8 games of the 2018 season but it wasn't that serious and he just set out for precaution and the Pistons weren't making the playoffs anyway. 
Blake wasn't as effective as a player in his final years in LA and his first year in Detroit because he wasn't a good enough three-point shooter to demand attention at power forward, and he's not good enough to defend the rim to play center full-time, so at times he does not have a huge impact. This year with the Pistons, he's shooting the three ball well enough to make up for the team's lack of spacing at other positions. He's making the most threes per game on this Pistons team. Of course, he can still finish over the top of people and do some damage in the post, but as the NBA climate changes, Blake has put in the work at the three point line to keep up. Do I expect Blake to keep up a 40% three point rate for the rest of the year? No, but I do think he'll have a career high in that percentage at around 36%. Another thing that is making Blake effective this year is he's combining his three-point accuracy with rim attacking. Blake is averaging almost eight free throws per game, which is the highest he's attempted since the 2014 season. Those are easy points to pick up and a way to get your matchup to rethink how to defend you. This is not a super explosive dunk in your face, Blake Griffin. It's a slightly different player that is getting his team wins as a floor spacer and probably getting them to the playoffs unless something drastic happens in the Eastern Conference. Next on the list we got Tyson Chandler who's been a huge help for the Lakers ever since he was bought out by the Phoenix Suns. On the Phoenix Suns it looked like he was going to retire once his contract was up. For one he wasn't that great with Phoenix and he wasn't that motivated on a bad team. Tyson has been through a long long NBA grind. He's been dealing with injuries since he was on those Chris Paul Hornets teams and now at the age of 36 he's on his last legs. But now with the Lakers, it looked like he still had something left in the tank after looking like he was done in Phoenix. Ever since he was picked up by the Lakers, the team has a defensive rating of 95.9 in the minutes Chandler has played, which is an elite number and means he's been a huge positive for the team. The Lakers record is 8-2 since they got Chandler, and he's been giving them great backup center minutes when JaVale McGee has been off the floor. Before the Lakers got Chandler, they were using Jonathan Williams or Kyle Kuzma at center, which meant easy buckets at the rim for the team or free throws. The Lakers were getting torched on defense, especially at the rim, but that's not happening as much in the non-JaVale McGee minutes. What Chandler is doing well is just boxing out, tipping out rebounds, and just using his IQ as a 7-footer to be a nuisance on defense for about 15 minutes per game, which is all the Lakers really need. This is a guy who anchored great defensive seasons in New York and Dallas, so he can definitely still help out with his IQ, even if he's a lot less athletic than he was in earlier part of this decade. I think he's exceeded most people's expectations, so if he takes a slight step back, then that's okay. All he's gotta do is be a body for 10-15 to 15 minutes a night. Now for the second to last player on the video, we gotta talk about Serge Ibaka, who I talked about in a previous video, so I won't make this part too long, but we gotta update on his progress. Ever since I made that video talking about Serge's decline on the Raptors and the revival at the start of the season, Serge has gotten even more effective for the Raptors. So far in the month of November 2018, Serge is averaging 18 points, 8 rebounds, and shooting 60% from the field, and blocking about one shot per game. Depending on the matchup, Serge will either start the game against a rangy center or sit behind Jonas Valanciunas so he can play against a more traditional center. The stats definitely look good, but just in general on the court, he looks more productive. Serge has been doing well at center, blocking shots, making mid-range shots, and just not being a liability. Last year in the playoffs, he was largely ineffective in most of the games against Washington and Cleveland. His contract at $12 million per year looked untradeable over the summer, but now it's good value in my opinion. If your center is giving you 17 points per game on 56% shooting with good defense, then that is a very effective player you can rely on for 30 minutes a game against almost every single team in the league. This is an OKC Ibaka on defense, but you're getting about 60-70% to 70 of that, which is still a really good defensive player. Last on the list we have Tristan Thompson who's been making a nice little comeback this year to what he used to be. It wasn't too long ago when Tristan Thompson was a part of that Cavs comeback against the Warriors in the 2016 Finals, helping out with his rebounding and defense. The things that made him valuable on the court against the Warriors were not on display in the regular season during LeBron's last year with Cleveland. Tristan was recovering from a calf injury last season and did not look good in the games he was trying to get back in shape in. If he could not explode off the ground for rebounds and get easy dunks like he used to, then you'd had to start to wonder would he ever be an effective starter again. Injuries can ruin a career as you guys all know, and he was in a bunch of trade rumors last year because of it. But through the first 17 games, Tristan has been good and probably the best player on this Cavs team. Yes, the Cavs are awful and will be selecting in the top 3 of next year's draft, but Tristan is doing all the things well that made him an important player in the playoffs. 
He's got eight double doubles. He's third in the NBA in total offensive rebounds and averaging a career high in rebounds per game. He has that first and second jump explosion that made him tough to stop on the glass. And if he can stay healthy, I don't see why he doesn't average a double double by the end of the year. Obviously, he has his flaws with shooting and passing, but if he's doing the things he does well, he's going to continue to be a decent starter, which is all you can ask for at this point. And that is it for some NBA players that are reviving their careers so far this season. Obviously, things will change or they'll keep up with how they're currently going, but I thought this would be an interesting video to make. Hopefully, I don't curse anyone in this video, but these players are doing well so far. Is there somebody else around the league that I missed in this video that is reviving their career or making an impact? I think I got a good group of 7 players that are making an impact at an all-star level or just off the bench. We're almost at 200k subs, so shout out to you guys who always make it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys soon.